The devastating earthquake in Haiti has faded from the headlines right here in America. Uh, people there, though, say, please don't forget us. For them, it's impossible to forget what's happened. And I recently visited a most unlikely hero who had little or nothing in common with the people of Haiti. But that was before she went there. She's been lending a hand there for years, and she tells me why she plans to be there for many more years to come. In a country notorious for violence and poverty, Susie Kraybacher may look like she doesn't belong. Despite her cover girl looks, expensive jeans, and designer sunglasses, though, she'd say she belongs here as much as anyone else. I had a, a dream that I wanted to take care of kids that nobody chose for the orphanages, for adoptions. Living a life of wrenching ups and downs, Kraybacher was a former foster child herself who went on to model for Playboy in the 80s. But years later, in 1994, she answered a different calling. I didn't really feel like I had a, an adult that was caring for me like the, the way I saw other children's parents loving on them. Over the years, she's built orphanages, schools, and clinics with her nonprofit Mercy and Sharing. In Cite Soleil, she's learned to work with some of Haiti's tougher residents, like negotiating the use of the school's basketball court with local gang members. That's pretty smart and pretty tough, uh, quick thinking for a Playboy bunny. Oh, please. <laughs> You must not know very many. <laughs> but when Kraybacher enters her orphanage, she's simply known as Mama Susie. She and her staff of 160 care for 5,100 kids. At the same time that their orphanage in Kazoo was destroyed, many more children came to need her help. Since the earthquake in January, she's taken on a number of new children. All of them are traumatized. All of them um, were in shock. Many of the children at Mercy and Sharing have disabilities, some of them serious, and won't be adopted or even live to adulthood. They will never leave here um, because there's no place for them to go. We try to give them a very happy life and to, to try to keep them comfortable. This may be an orphanage, but the people here tell me that they don't want to see the kids adopted out of here. First of all, they hate having to explain to the disabled kids why they didn't get picked. And they also think that the ones that grow up here have a special mission here in Haiti. They come and they change their country. They learn to be leaders. They are the engineers and the scientists and the teachers and the professors and the doctors. This young man, Aslan, is a student at Mercy and Sharing. Through a translator, he tells us that he studies a lot and already shares Mama Susie's mission. Oh, he says that he will become a doctor. Even though the rubble has yet to be cleared, young Aslan is already a believer that he and Mama Susie can rebuild Haiti one child at a time. Board members for Mercy and Sharing cover the costs of overhead and administration. Private donations are used to pay for schools and food and the clinics for the children. But Mercy and Sharing is just one of many organizations asking the same question. Where's all the money that's been promised since the earthquake to rebuild that country? We'll be looking into that a little bit later in another report. In the meantime, if you'd like to help, we'll have a link for it on our website for Mercy and Sharing.